Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, we're discussing the mindset of being free to fail. Early on in the series, Associate Professor Melanie Pope explained how behind successful people, there are often a series of failures. In this episode, David Robertshaw and I give our own examples of where we have failed in the past and how we have used these failures to shape our own future successes. We are going to also discuss how failure is just part of the journey, why you should aim high in your aspirations, and the mindsets that we use to overcome imposter syndrome. In this episode, you'll also hear the voice of Natalia Kodalavar, a first year online psychology student who is completing work experience by helping out with the podcast. So hello, David, and thank you very much for joining us on the Success as a Student podcast, We're talking today all about freedom to fail. Would you like to briefly introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, hi, Alex. So uh, my name is David Robertshaw. I'm the um, head of pre-qualifying healthcare in the College of Health, Psychology and Social Care. So uh, I'm a registered nurse mm. and um, my team teach um, apprentices, so people who are on, I guess, second chance learning, or they are people who maybe didn't do so well previously in their academic studies, but then they still come to university and they do really, really well. And so they teach nursing associates, system practitioners, uh, and ODPs, or practice found practitioners, they're, they're called. So yeah, so that's me. Sounds like you teach a lot of people who are similar to people who are on my course, who didn't necessarily do well at A-levels, but then come to university, a different type of study, different types of requirements, more independence, and they smash it. And I know lots of people who've done that. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I think that's really important to say that, actually. The thing that we've kind of found is that, um, and it's, it's kind of the opposite to what you, you would assume, really, is high levels of success before university does not always equate to people doing really well at university. Mm. And, and that's a particular University of Derby thing, I think. You know, that I, I really, I'm really glad I work here. I think it's a real privilege to work here because... We have the opportunity to be able to, uh, yes, teach some amazingly clever people and help them to reach their potential. And that's amazing. But we also get to help people who who didn't have such a great time at school or for whatever reason, because of learning needs or, you know, whatever's happened in their history, didn't do so well. But they do amazing. They fly. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's an it's an amazing thing. And I, I genuinely think the predictor for success is not prior attainment I you know. I totally agree with that and I think part of it is because you've almost learned from the failures that you've had and also because you're doing things that require different skills and university is a place where you can probably become independent so today we're talking about freedom to fail so just so that we're clear to anyone who's listening to this today what do we mean by being free to fail so I, I think freedom to fail is um, being open to things not going so well, but things also may go really well. Do you mm. know what I mean? So, yeah. um, I mean, and lots of people are, um, are <clears throat> they're, they're, they're perfectionists, I guess. You know, that's, you know, we, we always, we, we say this, don't we? And all of our uh, conversations it has to be perfect. You know, when you're getting married, it has to be perfect. It's been the perfect day. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm submitting this assignment. It has to be perfect. I can't <laughs> submit it unless it's perfect. And actually, I, I kind of think um, you can never reach perfection. And so we should be aware of that, you know. And I think what we can strive for is excellence. Mm-hmm. You know, we can strive for something which is really good. But I, I kind of think that you will never know if we will get something excellent if we don't put ourselves out there and think, you know what, I'm going to go for it, but I might fail. You know, it's the whole saying, what's that saying? Um, shoot for the stars and you might hit the moon. Is that yeah. the one? So it's about being open to it and, and saying, you know, what, I'm going to give it a go, but I might lose it all. <laughs> but uh, but it's OK. And it's about picking yourself up afterwards and thinking, yeah. I'm going to give it another go. I'm going to give it another shot. 
the the end is worth the the, the means, isn't it? You know, it's mm. worth doing it. So rather than not just uh, being conservative, doing things that you only know will succeed, trying things that might have a risk of failure, then. Yeah, and 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 I know on this podcast, I think you're talking about growth mindset, aren't you? People having a you know yeah. one always always learning and always trying something different, and that's that's what I think where I want to say really is 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 that. You know, you never, you can never grow unless you are, are willing to accept failure. You know, mm. the, the failures in my life have taught me that actually, um, you can carry on. You know, I, I, I mean, we'll talk about it probably in a bit, but I, yeah. you know, my A levels weren't so good. Um, but I, yet I teach. Uh, oh, there you go. You know, um, yet I, I teach in a university and I do research. You know, and, uh, um, you know, I've, I'm, I'm a, a registered nurse. You know, um, so, y- what. You, you can't get out there and do things unless you are willing to put yourself out there and give it a try, I think. You know? Yeah. Well, I think it's uh, really important to try to do that uh, and try to put yourself out there, try and try things and take things on. But for a student listening to this podcast, why might it be important for them to adopt this mindset of being free to fail? Because I think you never know where you might end up. Mm. You know, we all have dreams, don't we? And idea. you know, when you when you set out in your career, uh, at university, or whatever you you probably have a um, an idea of where you might want to go, or where you might want to you might want to be a barrister, or a policeman, a police mm. person, a police woman. You might want to be uh, in the military. You might want to be um, to work in business or wh- whatever you want to do. You you may never get there unless you open yourself to be free to fail. Yeah. So I mean, you have to kind of put yourself out there and give it a try and and have dreams. I think is what I'm saying. You should have dreams, and but but you have to recognise your dreams may not come true. You know that's mm-hmm. that is that is the reality, isn't it? Not everybody can be a barrister or a fighter pilot. You yeah, know, whatever you want to do, I suppose. It's interesting that you use that example because that's something that when I started university, I was definitely interested in being as a barrister. But I learned that actually my skill set is best used elsewhere. So I learned about that area and thought, actually, this is something that I would rather not pursue too hard. I tried it. I put myself out there. I learned from the failure that actually there are other skills I have that better suit me to other areas. So it doesn't mean I was had a fixed mindset, for example, by saying this is something I can never do. It's saying that actually maybe there's something else that I am better suited at. And this maybe isn't what I wanted to actually do. So I was unable to switch because I'd had that experience by putting myself out there. And... But you know that that, that fixed mindset is... Um... It's really hard to change, isn't it? You know, it's the defin- very definition is it's fixed, I suppose, isn't it? You know, um, I mean, if I give you an example, I, when I grew up, I um, like lots of people, I guess. Uh, so, I mean, I, I grew up, in, I'm working class. I grew up in Leeds. Um, you might be able to tell from my accent. Um, I was the first in my family to go to university. Um, you know, my family, if you go back, we were minors, you know, mm. uh, my dad um, worked in a company and stuff and but my parents drove me they expected so much of me and that that I think is a is a problem at the moment mm. you know it, generally is there is so much expectation for young people that if and you know with, with the social media world you know if you aren't this amazing perfect person mm. you're a failure yeah, you? you know, do you know what I mean? And this whole like, you got to look, good look good on Insta. You know, um, I'm I'm so old, Alex. I don't know <laughs> about these things, but you know, you got to look good on Insta. And uh, and actually, they're not. It's not a lot of it's not real, is it? You know, it's it's an image which people put out there. But I'm yeah. I'm waffling. What my key point is is, there was still when I was younger so much expectation. I think there always is expectation, and that feeling of not being able to live up to it mm. is so difficult, isn't it? Yeah, my my parents wanted me to be a doctor, Alex. So mm. a medical doctor. So I I I you know did all the things that you you do. I play about three instruments because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. I was an air cadet. Not only was an air cadet, I was like the warrant officer air cadet. You know, um, I I did loads of volunteer. You know what I mean? The pressure is so high, isn't it? Yeah. To do all these things, you have got to look perfect on your application. And uh, and I did actually. I got in. I got into three out of the four medical schools and I, I don't want people to think I'm being arrogant because when I was 18, I was arrogant. I was probably not a nice person, you know, mm. compared to the person I am now, I hope, but it's a journey of continually, impro- continually improvement, isn't it? But, but I, what I basically did was I sat back, I, I got those offers and I thought, you know, I mean, I've got this in the bag. 
I can chill my beans now. I can mm. just do whatever. And, I, and what happened was I didn't do so well in my A-levels. And so then, you know, UCAS time came around, results time came around, and I didn't get into medicine, funnily enough, mm. you know, because you, you're not perfect. And I ended up doing something different. I ended up doing engineering for two years at, mm. at the same university that I got in through clearing. So clearing to me is like the greatest second chance place ever. You know, yeah. clearing is amazing. Um, but I hated it. I hated it. Mm. For those two years, I had this fixed fixed mindset that you talked about. I, I thought, well, I, I, I'm meant to be a doctor. I want, you know, you can't shake that, can you? Mm. Do you know what I mean? You can never shake that. Um, that it's instilled into you almost with the pressure, isn't it? You know, you can never shake that that change of oh, I could try to do something else, you know. Um, and you feel lost, don't you, when you haven't made met your goal? Do you mm. know what I mean? You, you feel, well, what, what should I do now? I, I don't know what is the purpose of my life. So thankfully, I had a couple of deep and searching couple of years when I was doing something else, which I really didn't enjoy. But I learned stuff, you know, as we do. Yeah. Um, and I met somebody who, interestingly, uh, was training to be a doctor. Um, and she said, um, well, you know, I was talking about doing some med- medical. Why don't you go do nursing? Mm. And I thought, you know what? Uh, why not? Because I hate this. That's more like what I wanted to do. Um, and nursing is, is, and I want to be really clear about this, nursing is not a career choice for failures mm. because nursing is a really hard job. You know, it's it's it requires a complex synthesis of uh, knowledge, you know, evidence based practice, uh, working skills. It requires you to have a, a kind heart, skilled hands and a skilled brain, a head, you know. Yeah. And um, so it's not not an occupation for failures. You know, no. this is the tip of the sword in many ways. And it's, we've seen that this last year, haven't we? Definitely. You know, um, but actually I did that. And that was the making of me. I think it was probably similar with you. You know, I I, um, I got a first class. I absolutely loved it. I, I went straight into a job as an intensive care nurse. I did that for a long time. And uh, and funnily enough, I couldn't shake my mindset, Alex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I applied again. I applied again to yeah. medicine. And I don't know why I did that. That was mm. so silly of me. But what happened? I was rejected. Yeah. Again. And so... Instead of that, I decided to enroll in a master's degree. So I did a master's degree, uh, did really well in that. And then I came to work at the University of Derby and, and I've been here ever since. Mm. Um, but, and I, I, you know, I, I think actually in the beginning, I was not open to failing. I then accepted that failure was part of the journey, yeah. actually. And um, it's all come good in the end. Definitely. You know, it definitely has come in. I, I, I love the job that I have. I love the University of Derby. I love working here. Uh, it's fantastic working with students. It's a privilege. And I wouldn't have got to do these things if I hadn't have failed. Mm. I think it's a very inspirational story, actually. There's a number of key things that you did in there, which is, for one, you tried to switch. When you realised that something wasn't for you, if you were on a programme that you weren't enjoying, you swapped it. Uh, you kept trying um, and you even when you failed in one area, you didn't give up. You tried in another area. Uh, so you went on to nursing and you then went on to a master's degree after uh, having failed in, in in one way of getting onto another course. But failure is not the end, is it? No. And it, it I think it takes a lot of bravery for somebody mm. to say, to you know, to hold your hand up and say, this isn't working. Uh, I'm, I'm failing at this or it's not going so well for me. And actually, I think I might want to go do something else or something different. That takes such a lot of bravery. Especially Definitely. when you've got all these other external pressures of, of things going on, and I, I think you, I think we learn from failure, don't we? That actually yeah. a failure is okay. Eventually, it's really hard to see that, but eventually, failure, failure is, um, is part of the journey and the story, mm. isn't it? But what we must never be afraid is we must be never be afraid to do something because we may fail. Definitely. So, like last week, I did an exam, mm. and I was scared to death. Mm. You know. Uh, I, I'm a lecturer here. And I was scared to death the night before I felt sick. And that's not like me because I was afraid I was going to fail. I had the same last week. There you my go. exams. Exactly. So you, you know, it doesn't matter what stage or whatever you're at, does it? Mm. We'll always probably have this. We'll be sat here in 20 years, Alex, you know, uh, <laughs> talking about this. 
from you know oh all those failures we've done you know yeah um the, the chancellor of the university and um, when you have your graduation um he may say in his part of his speech that that fail means something it means first attempt in learning yeah don't know whether you've ever heard that F-A-I-L. i have yeah i definitely yeah. agree with that yeah and that's i agree I think it's true. You know, you could try something, but it's the first attempt. You've always got a second, third, fourth, fifth attempt. Never give up. Yeah. And even if you don't get it right the first time, you can get it back the next time. So I mentioned my exam last week. One of the biggest drivers with me is I tried a strategy. I put my heart and soul into that strategy to make it work as well as I could. But I knew in my in the back of my mind, if that strategy didn't work and I failed, that's okay. I can reset it. I can try again. And so I have, c- you ever, have you ever failed anything then? Um, I didn't do very well in my A levels. Is okay. one of the key Tell things. Tell us your story. Tell us your story. About so it. it's a bit similar to you. So you were um, you mentioned about how you were arrogant, or you felt like you were arrogant. I definitely felt the same. So I think having not done as well as I'd expected in my A levels, I think part of it was because I used to get by quite a lot by not doing at that much work. So you could always get by, get at the highest grades with barely put any effort in put in. And the longer I went with that strategy, the worse my grades got, but they were still acceptable. So instead of getting A stars, I started getting A's, and then I started getting B's, and then it came to A levels. So did you smash your GCSEs? Yes. Yeah, same. Most of them. Uh, yeah. The only C's I got were in Spanish and German. But the, the late longer I went on with that mindset of, I can do it, it'll be fine, the worse my grades got. And so from that failure, I then reflected on it and tried... And then started realizing that actually you have to put that effort in. So that failure was actually the best thing that could have happened to me. Because failing at that point, I was lucky. I got into the University of Derby. I had an unconditional um, already. And I was able to then put my heart and soul into it and know that if I tried, that would be the key. And so that failure really did help. And I think that's the reason why I'm the way I am now is because of that particular failure in my A-levels. So what do you think was the the thing that saved you, I suppose? Do you think it was coming to university or do you think it was something else? I think there were a number of things. So there was a number of influences in my life that were potentially holding me back in some ways. So uh, social barriers and university, I was able to be a lot more independent. There was a lot of opportunities that were able to be taken. Uh, and I was able to come with lots of people who didn't know me, didn't know who I was, didn't know I had this past arrogant mindset, and I was able to almost reinvent myself. And that's what university really was, is an opportunity to reinvent who you are. And I bet a lot of people who knew me from college wouldn't recognise me. I know that the teachers who taught me were very shocked. So I went back to my high school to help them out with some law days, and they were shocked that I was the same person. Because I never used to do my homework, I never used to try. And now I started trying, whereas before I was known for someone who just did it without trying. Mm. But you, I, th- I, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer. University makes people who they are. Mm. You know, I, 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 I went to Sheffield. I went to both universities in Sheffield, and um, you know, I, I, I will always fondly remember that place because that's the place where I became a bloke. You know, mm. a man. That's where I grew up. You know, and um. And I think that is what university does does for you. I, I feel like university is is a place, or it should be, a place where you can be challenged to grow as a person, where you can find yourself, you know, uh, and become who you really are going to become. Yeah. But but just sort of returning to what we're talking about today, all those things require you to fail at some point, don't mm-hmm. they? You know, yeah. you, you, you don't find the person you will become unless you experiment a bit i suppose you know and find your way through it and then eventually reach a consensus with yourself don't you do you know what i mean so yeah you have to do that i suppose you have to go through that process failure is the process you know by which you find yourself i suppose isn't it? yeah failure is really an opportunity is what i tend to think it's an opportunity to learn an opportunity to develop yourself and go further before i go on that point natalie do you have anything you want to add Yes, thank you, David. You were talking about um, your fellow student in the, in, the, in the medical school who actually uh, suggested you to try a different major. And uh, I'm just wondering, do you think if maybe sharing failure, failure with the other students or family members or friends could help us to go through failure together instead of on our own? I, I definitely think it can do. Uh, I didn't, what I didn't tell you was that lady became my wife. 
Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we share failure on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it is, I, I agree, uh, you know, the, the shared common experience um, of failing is, is really important, is it? And actually, through the adversity, you can become uh, closer with other people, can't you? You know, that's, mm. we know that as a fact, mm -hmm. don't we? If you think back to your friends from school or whatever, they're probably some of the closest friends you'll have or the friends that you, you go to university with throughout all of your life. You know, I'm a long way since university, but yet my, my friends are probably still from that time. You, you know, there were people listening to this thinking, I haven't met my friends yet. I'm only in my first week of, of uni or whatever. But, you know, and it's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? But the people that you have the strongest bonds and relationships with are the people you've failed with, mm -hmm. the people you've cried with, the people you've sat in your accommodation at four o'clock in the morning before the submission day, you know, 23.59 before the submission time, you know, and said, how on earth am I going to do this? And you work together to keep each other going, don't you? That's so important, isn't it? That peer support. We need to we need to carry each other, don't we? Mm -hmm. To get to the ultimate goal. You know, and if you do that, I think, you, you know, with other people, it's so much better, isn't it? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think uh, a lot of the friends that I had at university helped me on and it inspired me. I know for a fact that um, when I was nervous about things, I would often hide my nerves to help them with their nerves. And so yeah. often I did better when there was other people around me who were nervous because they'd had to have to take on this role of being the one who tried to lead. Um I also think though that 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 peer review, peer support, it enables everybody to level up, doesn't it? Yeah, you, you know, give... you know, if I, I, you know, you and I are working on something, I can see what you've done, you can see what I've done, and actually we can together, the the sum of the parts can make it better than the individual parts, mm. can't they? Do you see what I mean? The sum of the whole is better than the part. Always, Definitely. everything I've ever done, working together as a team with people, you get that enriched dialogue to get to whatever the end product is, and that's always better. So you get a lot of feedback, don't you? And you get to be inspired by others and you get to see what others do. So when you do something on your own, for example, you might not have that opportunity to have feedback whilst you're doing it for other people. You might never give yourself feedback, for example. So when you work and, with others... And failure. And failure, if you if you are by yourself, feels much worse, doesn't it? It can be... You know, if, you, if you're by yourself with no support, no other people, mm. that failing can be harder, can't it? You still yeah. have to be open to it, but I think it is sometimes better. It's always better, I feel, if you've got other people who can support you and talk you through it. Yeah, I definitely think so. I've, I've been lucky enough never to have be on my own when I've had my failings. There's always been people around me to support me and talk about the positives. And I think that's something is that I've always tried to do is when I've had a failure is to think about the positives. When I've seen someone else fail, I talk about what the positives are there. So yeah. could... What we ought to talk about now really is learning from failure, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, it's, I think it's really important that we don't just say, "Well, that's that's it, then, isn't it?" Mm. You know, uh, I mean, I, I've, there's other things I've done which I won't tell you about in detail, but you know, I applied for the RAF when I was 17. You know, um, I didn't get in because mm. of my eyesight is so terrible because I wear glasses. But I did, what I didn't do is I didn't think, "Oh God, I'm going to give up." You know, I thought, you know what, I'm going to learn from this experience. What have I learned about myself? What have I learned about the system? And uh, that learning is so important. That's back to the growth mindset, isn't it? Is what are, where are the opportunities for me to grow as part of this? What, what can I learn from this? And I think as long as you're always thinking about that, thinking how can I grow from failure, you're onto a winner. Mm. You know, if you get that for the rest of your life, you're onto a winner. You will be very successful, I think, if you can do that. It's definitely. So one thing that we said already is about putting yourself out there in a position where you can fail. But then the second thing from that is, or the second step is, if you do actually fail, uh, then you can grow and ref reflect on that failure and learn and grow in new ways from that reflection. When and the third thing I would say is never yeah. give up. Mm. You know, people, there are people I'm sure listen to this who are thinking about getting a job or what do I do after university? You know, mm. and it's hard to get a job. You'll do things that that actually, it, it's built in that you'll fail. You know, but and then what some people do is they, you know, let's say if someone's got a law degree, and and they have, they really want to be a barrister, they'll finish the degree and then they'll they'll apply for their people called pupilages, aren't they? Yeah, that's people, the They'll apply for some pupilages. They're very competitive, by the way, aren't they? Definitely. You know, extremely competitive. And then they might apply for five or six. 
and they don't get them and then they give up and they go work in Tesco or other supermarket brands are available. <laughs> um, but but what I'm saying, what I'm here to say is, is never give up. Yeah. Don't accept that actually that's I'm all right. Because I think the standard, the stand, I firmly believe this, this is separate, but the standard you walk by is the standard you accept. So if you walk by and you say, well, you know, what? I'm never going to get a pupillage. You know what? You'll never get one. Yeah. If you believe in yourself, I will get a pupillage, then you are, you will get one. Same you goes get... the same goes for a first class degree, for example. I agree. Yeah. Uh, if part of it is just aiming for the mark scheme for the first. So if you say Absolutely. to yourself, I d I don't need a first class degree, I can't get a first class degree. So I'm not you even can. going to bother doing well, critical if analysis. You, know you, can't, you know what? You'll never get one. Yeah. You'll never get one. And you know so many students say to me, uh, but actually, um, you know, what grade I get, it's not down to me. It's down to you as a marker. No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. The Never grade enough. that you get is the is the is based on the level and quality, the analysis, the critique of your work. That is one hundred percent influenced by you, isn't it? Yeah. Not by me. All I am doing is judging your work and saying, you know what, you smashed it. You get ninety seven. So yeah, a lot of it is actually putting yourself in the position where you can get what you want and aiming for what you want rather than aiming below it. Something that I actually did with my degree was um, I actually wanted to get a 2-1 because that's what you need to get a job in law, I was told. I didn't think I was worthy of a first. But I then thought about that, actually. If I fail to get a 2-1 because I've missed out on one of my requirements, then I might actually not... I won't get a 2-1. But if I aim for the first requirements, make a mistake, I'll still get the 2-1 that I want. Yeah. And then so that's the shoot for the stars and yeah. you get the moon. But then yeah. I got the stars because all of a sudden, after yeah. reflecting on the feedback that I got on the things that I tried to do for first, I could then get better. And all of a sudden, I was getting grades in the first class band that I never thought I could get. So always aim high, like you were saying earlier. And and what I think I also think is, um, you know, have that clear view in your mind what you want to get to. And then if you don't get to it, that's okay. Accept that. But why didn't you? Mm -hmm. What can you do to get you there? And then all you've got to do is do it, haven't you? Yeah. yeah I know that's that seems quite contrite me saying that, you know, and it, it's uh, you know, it's it's so easy for me to say that, you know, when I and I recognise that when people are have got like a thirty six in their assignment, and it's the last one they've got to do to finish the degree, it's awful, isn't it? You know, but you know what? You just got to think. I'm gonna put my feelings to one side. Uh, well, acknowledge them. Don't just silence them. But, you know, I know your feelings. I, I need to get on with this. And, and I just need to make a plan of action, what I can do, and I'll get through this. Mm. We talked about this a lot in the reflection episode of the series, um, about how you should wait a few days to take your uh, lose the emotional charge uh, and then reflect on what you can do. And even if it doesn't work the first time, it might work the second time or the third time. So don't expect the change that you do to instantly work because you might fail again by doing something different. But if you do the same thing again, you will fail. If you do something yeah. different, it doesn't work, you may fail. If you do something and it does work, you will succeed. So yeah. keep trying new and ways. And it's about honing that strategy, isn't it? Mm. You know, finding the ways that work for whatever it is you want to do. Honing the strategy down, and then you can just, it's repeatable, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and that's the same in life, you know, mm. definitely. Something that else I wanted to talk about in this episode is about what failure means and how what failure is to one person doesn't necessarily the same for another. So when we talk about failure, you don't we don't necessarily mean actually failing your exam. That could be failure to you. It probably will be failure. But sometimes a failure for someone is if you're aiming for a first, getting a two one. So it's a bit personal. What do you think about that, David? I I, I think um, I mean we're still talking about exams and grades, really, aren't we? Failure can Anything. be, you know, it might be that someone just wants to get out of the house yeah and they can't do you know uh, for whatever reason and, and they may be hardening themselves to think well i i can't get out of the house you know so i'm a failure or mm. you know when you, you think about like a um a new mum for instance you know has a baby and they often new mums new parents often feel like failures don't they because mm. they because they feel they can't meet their child's needs or they're not the kind of parent they want to be, you know. But a lot of that, it comes down to, like we said before about, you know, this feeling of having to have perfection. Yeah. And uh, actually, there is no such thing as perfection. You know, we need, we need to, that's something as a society I think we need to do. But, but you're right. 
um, failure means something different to everybody, and what some people regard as being a failure, others may not. Yeah, you know, might be a success. And, and, and but exactly. But also, what I think is is that we should not judge each other. Mm-hmm. You know, because as soon as you start to be judgy, the whole game's over, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? We 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 can't say. You know, let's say if somebody wants to get out of the house, you can't say to somebody, oh, come on, you can just go out the door. Look, I'll just take out the door. Easy. Because it's whatever that person's experience is, is yeah. on an individual basis is unique to them, isn't it? So on, you know what I mean? so on the one hand, you've got don't judge someone else, but also for the person who's struggling to get out of the house, don't compare yourself to anyone else. Don't say, well, they yeah. can get out of the house. We're both ways, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it definitely works both ways. And what we're talking about now links a little bit to something called imposter syndrome that I'd like to talk to you about for about two or three minutes, uh, yeah. just briefly. Uh, I have that really badly. I also have that as well uh, at times. Um, so what are we talking about with imposter syndrome then, David? So an imposter syndrome is this feeling of um, that you're, you're about to be found out. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, not and I'm, I'm convinced it's true. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but you're so off. It's uh, people... There is this thing called the Dunning-Kruger effect. I don't know whether you've ever heard of it. I've heard the name. I don't know what it means, but I probably do. So so there's two kind of ends of the spectrum. There's illusory inferiority and illusory superiority. Mm. And there's this, you you can relate it to so many things, but um, it's it's sort of like a continuum, I suppose, that people who don't know a lot think they know a lot. Yeah. And the people who do know a lot think they don't know a lot. Yeah, that's how I would describe it, uh, and and it's to do with a sort of recognition and a greater self awareness of who you are as a person and where you sit in the world. Do you know what I mean? That's where it kind of comes from. But imposter syndrome is is a little bit. It's related to that, I suppose. It's it's people who basically are absolutely in the position that they are or wherever they are uh, because they've worked hard, they've got the qualifications, uh, they've done the time, you know, they, they've got the talents, capabilities, all those other things, and to any external validation or view of it, they are absolutely where they need to be. Mm-hmm. But the person themselves doesn't believe they are. And they think that they will be caught out or um, found out somehow. And they have a real lack of belief in themselves. Yeah, It's a really hard one. It's very common for lots of people. Like I say, you and I both have it. Um, I have it more sometimes and less other times. I agree with that as well. It comes and goes. You know, it's not a, an ironclad feeling all the time, but lots of, I mean, you can ask me about people, other people, but there are lots of very famous, you know, celebratory people who have it 100%. It's a very common thing. It's something that a lot of people who are successful do feel. And I know I, I agree with what you feel about you being found out. So I know when I was a student, after I started getting the first that, I didn't actually aim to get first, like I said. When I started getting those first and people started thinking, Alex, he's the guy, he gets all the high marks. In my head, I was like, I'm not, I'm just lucky. And every assignment, I thought, this is the one where they're going to find me out for what I am, which is someone who does not deserve to get first, who's but just you, getting one. You went on that journey, didn't you? Because you said that when you were, let's say, a 16-year-old, you had total unwavering belief in yourself. Mm-hmm. You, you said you were arrogant, didn't you? Definitely. You did do no work, get the grades, bob on, everything's fine. <laughs> So you had what's called illusory inferiority. Uh, sorry, illusory superiority. Yeah. You thought you were better and yeah. you thought you knew it. Yeah. And you've went on a period of, of time, probably what, eight, ten years, that you've over that time become more self-aware and you've realized, oh, I'm this person within this wider world and this system. That's what university does, by the way, isn't it? You're this person in this wider world and this system. Actually, I don't know anything. I know nothing, you know. <laughs> But actually, you do know things, and you have to recognise you do know things. Um, but you've now got the illusory inferiority, haven't you? You know, you yeah. you think, oh, I'm much worse than I actually am. It fluctuates. It goes between the two, and it, and so it's not necessarily that you always feel inferior, but definitely when you get a new job, this is often that people something people have when you do something new, for example. Uh, when something goes maybe wrong or you fail slightly, you can definitely feel it. So if I do a workshop and it doesn't go as 100% planned, I think, this is it, they found me out now, they've got me. Yeah, that's it, I'm going to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the other thing is about praise. You know, when people say, yeah. you've done a really good job. We, I think as humans, we have a real uh, problem in accepting praise. You know, um, we, we should just say thank you, thank you, thanks so much. 
you know yeah. that's really nice but often what we go is oh i did nothing it wasn't me it was somebody else who did it actually and you know uh, I, I didn't really do much for it you know do you know what i mean it's about acknowledging actually thank you for what you recognize my contribution and i need to be compassionate to myself as well and say yeah you did a good job mm -hmm. david yeah i you know, agree that's so important. Um, there is actually a therapy called that, but I was sort of related to that, which is called compassion focused therapy, which is about com being compassionate to yourself mm. and putting yourself in the shoes of somebody else who, uh, you know, to say, what would they say to you and say it to yourself? Because people often do, as humans, we do struggle with this. Yeah. You know, it's a human condition. So the key message for anyone who's listening to this then is that if you do feel this way about yourself, like you are an imposter, um, or fraud, or whatever words you use to describe it to yourself. This is quite common, especially among successful people. And the second thing to do is recognise it's common and try to continue onward. You got any other advice for anyone who feels this way? I would say stay true to yourself. Uh, I know that feels a bit of a cliche, but that, I, I firmly believe that. Stay true to yourself and keep going. The, there was a, a chap who, uh, you can ask me his name now, an actor, a very prominent actor, and he said, whenever, because whenever he got imposter syndrome, he said, um, he basically, what he did was he was to double down, double down on the work, is what he said. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember his name now. He was in Suits. He was one of the, um, do you know who I mean? I, I, I have watched Suits. I don't know the actors' names in Suits. Oh, okay. I'll find it. And I'll tell you after this. But he, he, it was an interview with him, and, and he basically said uh, he gets imposter syndrome as an actor, as a preeminent actor, and his only way to solve it was double down on the work. So that's what I do. You know, mm. I try to take inspiration from people like that, double down on the work, and I'll be fine. Okay. I, I agree with that. I have one last question for you, which is a question I ask everyone who comes on this podcast. So, the question is, what advice do you have for someone who wants to be successful? Somebody who wants to be successful, be very self-aware. Don't be too critical on yourself. Stay true to yourself. Have a clear goal in mind and stick to it. Mm. And, uh, and don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid, you know, if you have to give up and start again, it's absolutely fine. Go for it. Very good advice. Thank you so much for your time today, David. Thanks very much. Thank you. The actor's name was Wendell Pierce. Wendell Pierce. Have a look him up. He did a Desert Island Discs um, talk and about um, about his acting career and how it all worked. And he basically said, yeah, um, you know, I have severe imposter syndrome. The only way to solve it is to double down the work. Thanks to David for this honest discussion about failure and imposter syndrome. This episode for me highlighted how our failures do really make us who we are and help us to find the success that we have in our future. This leads to the first key point that I've drawn from this episode, and that is that failure is part of the journey of a successful person. Successful people learn from their failures and use them to make their future successes. So, your past failures do not mean that you cannot be successful. Instead, persevere and reflect on them and use them as a foundation on which you can build your future successes. The second key point to highlight on this episode is that prior attainment does not mean success or failure at university. This works in two ways. First of all, if you did amazingly at A-levels, don't expect that you'll just breathe through your degree. Make sure to put the effort in and continue to develop. The same applied to me when I was at my master's level. I thought I'd just breathe through it, and actually, Initially, I didn't do as well as I planned to, so instead, I reflected, I tried hard, and was able to find success later on. The second way that this works is that if you did not do well at A-levels, or if you've done your first assignment and it's not gone well, you can still do well in the future. I know lots of people who either absolutely messed up their A-levels before coming to university, or they did badly in their first assessment, and then at the end of their degree, they came up with really strong grades. So, you can succeed if you reflect, have a growth mindset and put the effort in, rather than just relying on your past attainment, good or bad. My final key point from this episode is to shoot for the stars. If you have a fixed mindset, you'll only do as well as you have fixed yourself to be. If, however, you aim high, you may just achieve that. You don't know what you're capable of until you try it. 
So I know for me, if I didn't aim high, I would have only achieved at best the two one degrees that I aimed for and wanted, and I definitely wouldn't be where I am. There's lots of times when I've applied for things with no expectation that I'd actually get it. However, if you do aim high and you don't actually make it the heights that you aimed for in your first attempt, that doesn't mean you can never get there. Instead, reflect on it and consider how you can do better next time to actually achieve that. Later on in the series, I speak to Anisha Johal, and she discusses at first how she failed to get an internship, and then the next year, after reflecting on it and improving her experience, she went back for the same internship and received it. And that is a really good example of aiming for the stars and reflecting to get to where you want to. You may have noticed one word has cropped up in all three of these key points, and in almost all of the episodes so far of this series. That word is reflect. In the next episode, we are going to discuss this skill, and we're going to explore different methods and advice for how you can reflect in a joint interview with Naomi Bowers Joseph and John Hill. I think that reflection is probably the key skill in this series. It works with a lot of the mindsets that we've talked about so far, but I do think it's one of the key things that crops up and applies to every single skill area and allows you to go from one level to the next. So if you're interested in that episode, it comes out on the 17th of May 2021 at 12pm British Summer Time. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio of this episode. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar, Tim Zalstra and Naomi Bowers-Joseph for giving feedback for this episode and the series on the whole. Thank you very much for listening.